Um. A glass of water. Quickly! Come on! The correct answer is... What did he bring you? The Born Challenge! What's the missing word? Quickly! Hurry up! The correct answer is... C. Einstein is a famous scientist. Hello and welcome back. Okay. Uh, should your car be inspected from time to time? That's a question. Should your car, should, 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 should. Yes, should is, uh, is recommendable. Should is deberio, debe. Uh, should, la elis muda, should. All right. Should your car be inspected from time to time? Of course it should, okay. In fact, in this country, every year, no, excuse me, it depends on how old your car is. It depends on how old your car is. Whether, el que sea inspeccionada, o que se someta a inspección, ITV, as you say here, once a year or once every two years. Uh, should your car be inspected every year? Probably it should, okay? Because many people don't take good care of their cars. Many people don't check the, the pressure in the air, the air pressure in the tires. Many people don't check the oil level. Many people don't check other aspects of their car, which are critical. So yes, cars should be inspected regularly, or cars should be inspected on a regular basis. Okay, pero aquí es should. Should is... Tiene varios significados, todos muy parecidos, menos uno. Should es cuando estás diciendo debes, pero no es un imperativo. Moral, no es imperativo, es una recomendación, una sugerencia. No deberías fumar tanto, eh? You shouldn't smoke so much. You should study more. No estoy diciendo que tienes forzosamente o por narices que estudiar más. Eso es you have to, you must. Come on. Pepe, Paco, Manolo, Inés, Rafael, Rafa, come on. You must study, come on, you really must make a stronger effort. Aquí estoy instándolos. O instándote a realmente ¿eh? arrimar el hombro y trabajar y remar fuerte. Ok, en ese caso diría must. Now, should is simply a recommendation. Should. Come on, I think you should study a little more, don't you? Don't you think you should? Don't you think you should study a little bit more? All right, so should is a recommendation or a suggestion. Should is also simply a moral question of behavior. Una cuestión moral del comportamiento. Okay, que no es imperativo necesariamente, pero es conveniente. Eh? You should be polite to other people. You should treat other people as you would want those people to treat you. Uh, you should um, give money or you should be uh, helpful, ser servicial, whenever possible. Things you should do. You shouldn't be rude to other people. Rude, escrito rude, is impolite, maleducado. All right, you shouldn't be rude to other people. You shouldn't be proud, soberbio. No, no, you should be more humble, okay? You should study English more, in my opinion, eh? You should, but not too much, because if you study too much, you'll learn English, and then you won't need me anymore, okay? And I need perpetual students. It's always good to have estudiantes perpetuos. To, it's always good to have perpetual students who come to me, pay money for classes, and they never learn. And so I, I have a perpetual or a inexhaustible, inagotable fuente de ingresos. I have an inexhaustible inexha source of income. Yes, I have an inexhaustible and inexhaustible source of income from my students because they come, they like my classes. Wow, they, oh, Richard. Me encantan tus clases. Me encanta venir aquí a estudiar. Me encanta el inglés. Because they enjoy my classes. But then they go home and they don't study. 
So they continue coming back every year, paying money. Uh, I'm not a cynic, okay? But it, in, to a certain degree, to a certain extent, this is true, okay? Y si quiero ser cínico, que no lo soy, podría decir esas cosas que conviene. That you shouldn't study, please, because I need a perpetual source of income. But you should study more. You should. You should. Entonces, should es um, debería, se traduce como debería, también como debe, cuando es una cuestión de actitud moral uh, conveniente en la vida. You should. All right. Now, must. Ojo, bueno, should. Voy a terminar con should. Should también es la usamos mucho cuando en castellano decís con toda seguridad, con toda probabilidad. Con toda seguridad hay, hay unos mil habitantes en ese pueblo, con toda probabilidad. There should be about, no, I think there should be about a thousand people there. Okay, so we use should in that way as well. All right, he should be here any minute. Tiene que estar, está al llegar, está al llegar. No, esto no es debería estar. Está seguramente al llegar. Está, con toda probabilidad, está a punto de llegar. He should be here at any minute. He should be here right now. I'm surprised he's not here. So, and that's another case. Now, must, ojo, must is, um, also has two different meanings. Uh, must has a meaning which is un imperativo moral. And must, okay, a diferente de have to. Must is una obligación internamente impuesta. Okay, te lo impones a ti mismo. I must study more. Oh, tengo que encontrar manera, debo, por todos los medios, encontrar una forma de estudiar inglés más. I must learn this language. Te estás imponiendo una obligación por decisión tuya, propia. All right. Ahora, if a person comes into your house, with a rifle, and he says, okay, I'm going to kill you if you don't learn English, and I'm going to stay here, even if I have to stay here for two years, and if you don't learn English within two years, I'm going to kill you, okay? In this case, probably you wouldn't say, I must learn English, when you call your friend and say, hey, Pepe, <coughs> listen, I can't go with you on that trip to Australia, the two-month vacation, because I have to learn English. Aquí have to. Las obligaciones externamente impuestas por circunstancias o por porque alguien te obliga is um, alguien o alguna ley. You have to. All right. You have to. We have to. Now you can use I have to learn English, but really nobody is in, in well circumstances. Yes. English is the lingua franca of this century, and it's going to be for the entire century. So really, you can say, circumstances obligate you to learn English, and you can say, have to learn English. But really, there's nobody holding a gun to your head. There's nobody with a whip who's going to punish you if you don't learn English. So really, I think it's more appropriate to say must. I must, should mean I should learn English. La verdad es que debería aprender inglés. Eso no tiene fuerza para nada. I should. Okay. Es una autosugestión, una autosugerencia, una auto recomendación. Oh, creo que debería aprender inglés ya, ¿no? I think I should learn English. Ahora bien, vamos a hacer un imperativo moral. Oh, I really must find a way to solve this Deficiency, esta carencia, deficiencia. I really must, that's I'm imposing on myself. Es más urgente, hay más urgencia aquí. Debo forzosamente encontrar un modo, un modo para vencer este tema. I really must find a way. Now, have to is external. Okay, now if you're driving, okay, if you're driving your car, the speed limit says 120 kilometers per hour, so you have to drive at 120. Okay, it's, it's the law. So it's externally exp exposed, imposed, excuse me. All right, should your car be inspected from time to time? Yes, it should. Your car should be inspected. The tires should be checked. You should check the air pressure. Look at the tires in your car. 
the tires. You have four tires. Well, you have five, really. You have a spare tire in the trunk or the boot of your car. If you have a normal car, uh, you open the boot. Los británicos dicen boot para el maletero. Los americanos decimos trunk, como un tronco de árbol, trunk. You open the trunk. Trunk viene de la antigua palabra baúl, porque un baúl de viaje is a trunk. Okay, trunk. Trunk has four meanings. Ojo, oh, uh, cuidado. Trunk, trunk means trompa de elefante. The elephant's trunk. Tronco de árbol. Trunk. Tronco del cuerpo. Tell me in your trunk. Okay, like the tree trunk. And a trunk means un baúl. And trunk means el maletero in America y en Canadá. The trunk. Porque antiguamente en los antiguos coches, in the old cars, 100 years ago, they didn't have maletero. It was a car, and in the back there was a, había un baúl. And that's the uh, origin of the word trunk, all right? But the Brits, the British and the Irish say boot. I think the Australians and New Zealanders too, and South Africans say boot como una bota, la bota, the boot. Now, if you open the trunk or the boot, there's a spare tire visible or under the floor of the trunk. And it's a spare tire. Spare, escrito spare. It's la rueda de repuesto. Decimos neumático de repuesto in English. Uh, the spare tire. So you have five tires on your car, but four are working, functioning. Uh, in some countries, in the United States, it's very common to rotate the tires. And so every once in a while, de vez en cuando, fijaos como lo acabo de decir, every once in a while, from time to time, every now and then, on occasions, okay, you take your car to the garage, and they raise it and choo -choo -choo -choo. quickly they change, they rotate the tires. And it's very common in the States. It's not common here. Here I've never rotated the tires on my car. Maybe it's recommendable, but I've never seen the mechanics rotate the tires on my car. Okay? Now I have a car in renting, what you call them renting. And so uh, I don't pay for the repairs on the car. I pay a rental fee every month I pay a rental fee, F-E-E. -E. Es una palabra muy importante, porque se usa mucho, ¿no? Presta, prestación de servicios se basa en honorarios. It's a fee, a fee. But a fee también es uh, la cuota que pagas. En este caso, un alquiler, un alquiler a largo plazo. A rental contract, and you pay a rental fee. And that fee covers everything. It covers the insurance which is always very expensive. <coughs> it covers <coughs> any types of repairs. It covers changing the tires once or twice during the life of the car. It, uh, changing the oil, everything except gasoline. So really, uh, when you rent a car instead of buying a car, the only thing additional you pay for is putting gasoline in the car or petrol in the car. And so it's, it's a convenient, muy como, it's a convenient way of doing it. Now, if you analyze, if you make calculations, okay, and you say, you make calculations and you calculate everything, maybe it's cheaper to buy a car and to pay the car insurance, to pay for the oil changes, to pay for the tire changes, to pay for, I don't know, every, the park, everything. Maybe it's cheaper to buy than to rent, but it's certainly less comfortable, okay? Because you need to change the oil at certain times, and a rental contract obligates you. You have to change the oil at a certain point because they call you. It's oil change time. All right, so question, should your car be inspected from time to time? Yes, it should. Next question, have the tires on your car been changed? When should you change the tires? Cambiar las ruedas. You should. Some people don't change and it's really, really dangerous for you and for other cars. Eh? If you suffer a blowout, un reventón, blowout, todo junto, blowout. If you suffer a blowout, you can kill yourself, but you can kill other people too. So, question. Have you changed the tires on your car recently? Have you? How many kilometers do you have on your car? Say so you on. Repito la pregunta. How many kilometers do you have on your car? 10,000, 20,000, 30,000, 40,000? If you have 40,000, 
maybe it's time to change the tires if you haven't done it yet. It's a little bit expensive often, but uh, you need to change the tires. So make sure the tread, check the tread. Escrito tread, como el pasado de read, red, leer, añadiendo una T, tread. Check the tread on your tires, and you'll know simply by a visual inspection that uh, maybe you need to change the tires, okay? Because otherwise it could be dangerous for you and for other people. Next question, was Paris an important city before Roman times? Paris, Paris, the capital of France. I love Paris in the winter. Okay, you know the song. I love Paris. It's a song from Hollywood movie. I love Paris in the autumn. Okay. I love Paris in the springtime. Do you like Paris? Have you ever been to Paris? Paris is the capital of France. It's a big, it's the second biggest city in Europe, I think. What's the biggest city in Europe? Yeah? London is the biggest city in Europe, maybe. Now, maybe Moscow. Interesting question here. Istanbul. Istanbul is in Europe. Part of it, most of Istanbul. Have you ever been to Istanbul? Istanbul is separated, has two sides, the Asian side and the European, European, European side, all right? And the European side is uh, much bigger than the Asian side. It's divided by the Bosphorus, the Bosphorus, okay? And the Bosphoro, Bosphoro, I think you say in Spanish, the Bosphorus, which is basically at that point like a river, but a big river. And on one side is one certain neighborhoods, areas of Istanbul and the other. Now, what's the biggest city in population in Europe? I think it's London, but Istanbul or Moscow could be competitors for that honor of the biggest city in Europe. And Paris, what's the population of Paris? It's around eight or nine million people. It's quite big too, but it's not as big as London. All right. Now, Paris is the capital of France. And the question here, <coughs> was Paris, was Paris an important city before Roman times? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. Although, uh, Julius Caesar, in his campaigns in Gaul, it's curioso, en español decís en las Galias, sus campañas de las Galias. And I don't know why you say Galia or Galias in Spanish. We say Gaul, Gaul. And I remember uh, when there was a very famous novel in the uh, late Middle Ages in the Renaissance period, Renacimiento in Spain, Amadis de Gaula. Okay, now Gaula is the same as Gaul. That's the old word for the, the area that is today France. But then when you talk about Julio Cesar y sus campañas, when you talk about Julius Caesar, and his campaigns, you say Las Galias. So that's a question I haven't had time to research, which is really correct in Spanish, Las Galias or Gaula, you know, because in English we say Gaul. Now, during the period of Gaul, Paris was not important, although there was um, uh, a tribe, a tribe, una tribu de los Parisi, and they were located in the area that is today Paris, of course. And then uh, Julius Caesar, passed through that area and even had some meetings in that area. But the Parisi tribe was not the most important tribe uh, during the Roman times. So, question, was Paris an important city before Roman times? No, it wasn't. It wasn't an important city before Roman times. Next question, was there a cemetery where your house stands now? Uh, I hope not. Okay, cemetery, cementerium. Cemetery is where you bury people after they die. Cemetery. Fijaos. Cemetery. Okay, no hay ningún N ahí. Aquí se dice cementerio. Okay. In French, cimetière, tampoco hay N. Yo creo que es una edición española, esa, esa N en medio. I don't know how to say it in Latin. How do you say cemetery in Latin? Y ahí tenemos la raíz de la palabra, a ver si una N o no, en latín. I don't know. Cemetery. Question again, is there a cemetery where your house stands? Stand, como está de pie. ¿Dónde está tu casa ahora? 
Uh, you remember the uh, movie Poltergeist? Poltergeist. It's a story of ghosts and spirits and evil spirits. And uh, the big the problem is is because the uh, residential area, the housing development, see it's a development, desarrollo para una urbanización. We say una zona residencial, una urbanización. We say a housing development that was built on an old cemetery. Okay. And so the uh, spirits of the people who were buried decided to uh, express their grievances. Grievances. They decided to express their grievances. Expresar sus reivindicaciones. Grievances. Interesting word. Uh, creating some problems for one particular family and later for the rest of the families in the neighborhood. Poltergeist, quite a... <laughs> scary movie when it came out, cuando salió, when it came out, directed by Steven Spielberg. But my question is more specific about you. Is your house built or was there a cemetery where your house stands now? Okay, probably not, probably not, but you never know. For example, I live relatively close to the center of Madrid. I live in an area that maybe 400 years ago was in the country. But 300 years ago, I imagine it wasn't totally in the country. There are certain landmarks, okay, certain things, a palace, un cuartel. There are certain things that, were, that have been there for 400 years, but it's clear that they were built outside of the city, outside of Madrid, in the country. But today it's in practically in the center. And it could be, podría ser, it could be, it could be, it could be, it could be that uh, my house stands on a piece of land where there was a cemetery before. I don't know. You never know. All right, next question. Would Albert Einstein be over 100 if he were alive today? If Albert Einstein were, were, porque digo were en vez de was, Albert Einstein era Alemán or Suizo or Austriaco. I think he was Alemán originally. Albert Einstein was German. He was a German Jew or Swiss. He was, era o fue. Y fue un gran hombre. Yes, Albert Einstein was. Pero aquí digo were. If Albert Einstein were, porque estoy diciendo fuera. Si Albert Einstein estuviera, o en este caso estuviera vivo ahora mismo. If Albert Einstein were alive today, he would be over 100, definitely. He would be over 100, okay, if he were alive today. Yeah, but he's not. He died many years ago, but he died when he was in his 70s or early 80s, so he'd lived a long life. The first part of his life, he lived, I think, in Switzerland most of the time. I think in Switzerland. And then he migrated, he immigrated to the United States in the 1920s or early 1930s. And uh, he lived the rest of his life in uh, the United States, I think principally in New Jersey. New Jersey is a state located just south of New York City, crossing the Hudson River. You're in New Jersey. It's on the, the coast of the United States, south of New York City. And New Jersey is the home, New Jersey is la sede, of Princeton University, the University of Princeton, which is a, a very prestigious university in the United States. And I think Einstein was there teaching physics or mathematics uh, for several years, for many years. Albert Einstein, now, would he be over 100 if he were still alive? Uh, yes, he would. How, and my grandfather, my father's father, how old would he be if he were still alive? Well, he was born in 1891, which means he would be about 118 years old now if he were still alive, okay? My uncle, my mother's brother, how old would he be now if he were still alive? My mother's brother died relatively young. I think he was 58 years old when he died. And uh, so, that, that was a long time ago. If my uncle were, otra vez were, no were, were. If my uncle were still alive, he was born in 1920. He was born in 1920, so if he were still alive today, he would be 80, 
eight, 87 or 88 years old. Huh. Okay. Uh, his brother, uh, my other uncle, is still alive. He's a younger brother, and he's 85. So, yeah. But my uncle died young. Okay. That uncle. But the other one's in good physical condition. All right. They're telling me that I have to say goodbye. All right. If I were able to continue, I would. But I have to say goodbye because we have to say goodbye because the class is over, because the time is up. It's time to say goodbye. Adios. So long means hasta la vista. Happy trails to you. Felices senderos es una canción en inglés. Happy trails to you until we meet again. And we will meet again tomorrow or very soon to continue in the quest to improve your English, okay? En la búsqueda de la mejora de vuestro inglés. Thank you very much and see you soon. Bye-bye. Which one is correct? Do you know the right answer? Not much time left. The correct answer is... A. If I had a good job, I'd enjoy working. The Born Challenge. Choose the right question. It cost around 100 euros. You don't know, do you? <laughs> chop, chop. The correct answer is... How much did it cost? Creo que es una idea muy buena. Que es para gente que realmente no tenemos mucho tiempo... Eh, pues de irte a Londres o a Estados Unidos porque merece, por lo menos ya que por lo menos tienes que estar un mes para que sea algo mínimamente efectivo en cambio aquí lo tienes todo como condensado en una semana, pero estás en España y pasas todo tiempo hablando, escuchando inglés inmersa realmente en, en la lengua inglesa Creo que es una buena experiencia y también a nivel personal, bueno, y sirve mucho para abrirte, para conocer otra cultura, otro tipo de gente totalmente distinta a la, a la que estás acostumbrada en España, porque son otro tipo de entender la vida, de vivir la vida. Y luego también te hacen participar muchísimo en actividades y te ayuda, pues sobre todo a perder la vergüenza que tenemos, que es algo muy arraigado en en los españoles. Mi nivel es exactamente el mismo, pero lo que consigues viniendo aquí es, bueno, perder la vergüenza que todos los españoles tenemos de hablar inglés en público, ganas confianza, te sueltas y por lo menos estás inmersa durante una semana en... bueno, pues con ingleses y en la lengua inglesa y más que nada oyes muchísimo diferentes estilos, distintos acentos de inglés y eso es importante. Te das cuenta de que, bueno, de que tú también puedes hablar inglés y que de más o menos te entiende la gente, te puedes hacer entender y eso es importante. Hello again, welcome back. Hmm, I'm breathing. I'm breathing through my nose. Yes, breathing technique is very important for health. People who know how to breathe well often are healthier than people who don't. You breathe in and you breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Inhale, exhale. Now to breathe is respirar. And it's spelled breathe. Con E al final. The pronunciation is breathe. Th 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 th. Th vibrada. 
breathe. Aliento, respiración, is breath. Ah, I've lost my breath. I need, to, I need to catch my breath. Breath. Some people have bad breath. Ooh, okay. So some people take mouthwash for their breath. Okay. Breath is aliento, respiración. To breathe is respirar. To inhale is to breathe in. To exhale is to breathe out. It's preferable to breathe in through your nose and to breathe out through your nose or through your mouth. It's not usually recommendable to breathe in through your mouth. Only people who are running a long race breathe in and out through their mouth. To breathe. I'm breathing. And when this class is over, I think, I hope, I will continue breathing. The Form Challenge Which one is correct? You haven't got all day. Come on, come on. The correct answer is... A. She thought about the problem. Pronunciation. One of the. One of the. One of the questions was really tricky. One of the questions was really tricky. I'd like one of the new MP3 players. I'd like one of the new MP3 players. Why is one of the printers not working? Why is one of the printers not working? One of the. One of the. Pronunciation. Pronunciation. Because of the. Because of the. Did you buy it because of the price? Did you buy it because of the price? I didn't buy it because of the color. I didn't buy it because of the color. We arrived late because of the delays. We arrived late because of the delays. Because of the. Pronunciation. Which one is correct? You're running out of time. Only a few seconds left. The correct answer is... C. My car broke down yesterday. The Born Challenge! What's the missing word? You don't know, do you? <laughs> Not much time left. The correct answer is... A. He earns a lot of money in his job. No te vas a Inglaterra y... Oyes mucho inglés, hablas mucho inglés, pero solo con un acento, ¿no? Y aquí tenemos eh, 12 anglos y de los 12 hay eh, 6 nacionalidades distintas. Eh, como te digo, americano, canadiense, australiano, neozelandés, irlandés y un inglés. Entonces, distintos acentos y, y cambias, cada hora cambia el de acento. Luego, el, 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 oído, el oído tiene que estar muy, muy pendiente. Creo que esa es la ventaja, ¿no? que en muy poco tiempo escuchas muchos acentos distintos. Hello and welcome back to the one minute English class. Frequency adverbs or time adverbs. Always. 100%. I always do the best I can. 100%. 90%. I usually do the best I can. Normalmente hago lo mejor que puedo. puedo. I usually do the best I can. I normally do the best I can. I generally do the best I can. 
That's more or less 90%. I often do the best I can. 50%, 60%. I sometimes do the best I can. Maybe 30%, 20%. I seldom do the best I can. 5%. 10%. I rarely do the best I can. 5%, 3%. I hardly ever, I hardly ever do the best I can. It's one, maybe 1%. Never, I never do the best I can. <laughs> yeah, Zumbago. I never do the best I can. I simply do the minimum. Just enough to get by. Yeah the minimum effort necessary. I never do the best I can. So, never, zero percent. Hardly ever, one percent. Seldom or rarely, maybe five percent. Sometimes, maybe 20, 30 percent. Often, it's relative, between 40 and 70 percent. Usually, 80, 90 percent. And of course, almost always, almost always, 98 percent. And always, always. Pronunciation. Fora. Fora. I'm going for a walk. I'm going for a walk. Jill bought it for a friend. Jill bought it for a friend. Can I see you for a minute? Can I see you for a minute? Fora. Fora. Pronunciation. The Born Challenge. Choose the right question. He pays me once a month. Oh, you've really improved your English. Quickly. The correct answer is... A. How often does he pay you? Hello and welcome. Welcome back. Okay, we're back for our second half hour with two little kids with Sergio on my right. No, excuse me. Sergio on my left and Marina on my right. Okay, Sergio, is this a pen? Well... Yes or no? Yes, it is. Is, is this a microphone? Yes, it's a microphone. Just yes, it is. Okay. Yes, is this a? It is. All right. Is this a table? Yes, it is. Is this a finger? Yes, it is. Is it my finger? Yes, it does. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Is this a sweater? I just this. Yes, it is. What color is it? It's blue. All right. Is this a sweater? It will. Um, I think so. Yeah. What color is it? It's blue, green. And brown. Brown. And All right. Don't touch the microphone, okay? Now, is this my ring or your ring? It's your ring. Is it on the table or in my hand? It's in your hand. Is it a gold ring or a silver ring? A gold. It's a gold ring, okay? And am I putting it on or taking it off? Putting it. It's on. And how many rings do you have? Zero. I don't have any? I don't have any. How many cars do you have? Any, do, I don't have any. Any cars. And ha, do you have a dog at home? No. Ask me if I have a dog. Do you have a dog? No, I don't. Ask me if my daughter has a dog. Does your daughter have a dog? Yes, she does. Ask me what kind of dog she has. What kind of dog does she have? She has a German Shepherd. Okay, ask me how old the dog is. How old is the dog? It's about seven years old. Ask me how often I see the dog. How often? How often? How often do you see the dog? I see the dog every day. I see the dog every day. Ask me why. Why do you see the dog? Every day. Because the dog is in the office where my daughter works. And ask me if the dog is always happy to see me. Is your dog always happy to see you? Yes, it is. And ask me if I feed the dog every day. Do you feed the dog every day? No, I don't. Ask me who feeds the dog. 
Who feeds the dog? Uh, my daughter does, okay. And ask me if the dog was born in Spain. What the dog born in Spain? No, the dog wasn't born in Spain. Ask me what the name of the dog is. What's the name of the dog? What's the name of the dog? The name of the dog is Lafa. Lafa. Ask me why the dog's name is Lafa. Why the dog's name is Lafa? Why is the dog's name? Because it's from Lafara. Okay. Yes. And ask me where the dog was born. Where was, the dog, was the dog born? born? The dog was born in England, not in Spain. What, what language do the people speak in England, Marina? Do you know? Mm, do they speak English? English? All right. What language do the people speak in Germany? German. They speak German. Ask me what language the people speak in Japan. Hmm? What language? Mm. Do you know? No. All right. Is Japan a city or a country? A uh, city. No, it's a no, country. A country. Is Tokyo a city or a country? It's a city. Is Madrid a city or a country? It's a city. Is it a big city or a small city? Well, it's huge. City. Is the Manzanares a river or an ocean? Do you know? Is the Pisuerga a river or an ocean? It's a river. Is it a long river or a short river? I don't know. You don't know. Ask me if the Pisuerga is a long river. Is the Pisuerga a long river? Not too long. Ask me if the Mississippi <coughs> is a long river, Marina. The Mississippi is a long river. Pero es una pregunta. Is the Mississippi? Is the Mississippi a long river? Yes, it is. Ask me if Orlando is a big city. Orlando is a big city. Es una pregunta. Is Orlando? Is Orlando a big city? Yes, it is. Ask me if Florida is a big state. Is Florida a big state? Yes, it is. Ask me if there are a lot. Yes, it is. Ask me how many people there are in Florida. How much people are how there? How many? How many people are there in Florida? Uh, there are about 20 million people in Florida. Ask me how many people there are in Spain. How many people are there? Are there in Spain? There are 45 million people in Spain. All right. Ask me how many people there are in this room. How many people there are in are this Are there? Room? Are there in this room? There are 12 people in this room. Ask me how many people there are in front of the camera, Sergio. How many people are there in front of the camera? Uh, there are three people in front of the camera. You, me, and your sister Marina. Yeah. All right. And uh, is Marina six years old or five years old? She's six years old. Is her birthday in February? Nope. When is her birthday? It's in March. It's in March. Is it at the end of March or at the beginning of March? It's at the end of March. So, in March, <coughs> will she be seven or eight years old? She will be seven years old. All right. Is she in the first year in school or in the second year? She's in the... Uh, fourth first. year, fourth year. And does she know how to read and write? Yes, she does. Does she know how to read and write in English too, or only in Spanish? Well, she knows how to. To read. You know how if she knows how to write, but she knows how to read in English. Yeah. All right. And does she speak English better or Spanish better? I think that. I think that. She speaks Spanish better. Okay. And did she know English before you went to Florida? Well, very little. Did you know English before going to Florida? Yeah. You did? All right. And how long were you in Florida? I was one year. One year in Florida. And did you live in a big house or in a small apartment? In a big apartment. In a big apartment. <laughs> And uh, did you have your own bedroom, or did you share a bedroom with your brother? I have. Uh, I had. I had my own bedroom. Bedroom, and did you have a big bed or a small bed in your bedroom? Do you remember in Florida? Uh, no. You don't remember. Okay. And did she have a big bed or a small bed? She had a small bed. She had a small bed, and uh, did she keep her room clean, or was her room always messy? Well, I don't know, but I think it... It was? I think it was. 
but I don't know. You don't know. And normally, it, it, here in Spain, is your room normally messy or clean? Messy. <laughs> well. Messy? Yeah? But do you clean it or does your mother clean it? <coughs> Usually, I do. Usually, and do you make your own bed or does your mother make the, your bed for you? My mother does. Your mother does it. And what time do you get up every morning for school, Sergio? Um, eight o'clock. At eight o'clock. Ask me what time I get up every day. What? Uh, what time? What time do you wake up? Up. Um, in the morning. In the morning. Me? What time do I wake up in the morning? At twenty minutes to six. Before six o'clock. Wow. I get up very early. Yeah, ask me why I get up early. Why do you get up early? Because I start work early. Ask me what time I start work. Uh, what time? What time do you start work? I start work at 7.30, very early in the morning, yeah. But, but what person may get up at six o'clock to go to class in the morning? Yeah, I, I, I start teaching my first classes at 7.30 in the morning, all right? Ask me how many students I have. How <clears> many <throat> students do you have? I have 500,000 students at the same time. On the TV? On TV, no, I teach on the radio, too. Oh. All right, I teach on the radio, too. Ask me if I like to teach. Do you like to teach? Teach. Teach. Yes, I do. Ask me if I like to teach children like you. Do you like to teach children? Like? Like me. Yes, yeah, sometimes I like to teach children like you. And ask me if I like to teach on television. Do you like to teach on television? Yes, I do. Ask me if I like to teach on the radio. Do you like to teach on the radio? Yes, I do. Ask me if I like to eat spaghetti. Do you like to eat spaghetti? Yes, I like to eat spaghetti. All right. Here, put your feet, hands down. Ask me if I like to eat spinach. Do you like to eat spinach? No, I don't. Well, it depends. Some Maybe. kinds of spinach, OK? Do you like to eat spinach? Every single spinach. Every single spinach. All right. And does your mother make spinach well? Yes, she does. All right. Now, do you have spinach every day at home? No, I don't. Okay. How often do you eat spinach? Once a month. Once a month. Ask me how often I eat spinach. How often do you eat spinach? About once a year. Not very often. All right. Ask me what kind of spinach I like. What kind of spinach do you like? I like cream spinach. Okay. Ask me if my wife makes cream spinach well. Does your wife make cream spinach well? Yes, she does. Very, very well. All right. And ask me if I'm going to see my wife <coughs> after this class. Do you... S are you going? Are you going to see your wife uh, after this... After this... Class? Class? Yes, I am. Ask me where I'm going to see her. <coughs> where are you going to see her? I'm going to see her at home. Ask me if we are going to stay at home. Are you going? Are you going to, to stay. stay with? At home? At home. No. Ask me where we're going to go. Are you? Ask me where. Where are you going to go? We're going to go out. Ask me if we are going out for dinner. Are you going out for dinner? Uh, yes, we are. Ask me if we are going to a nice restaurant. We're going to our nice restaurant? Yes, I, we are. Ask me why. Why? Yeah, ask me why we're going to a nice restaurant. Why are you going to a nice restaurant? Because it's our anniversary, our wedding anniversary. Yeah, yeah. Ask me if I'm married. Uh, do you marry? Are you married? Are you married? Yes, I am. Ask me how long I've been married. How long have you been married? I've been married for 30 years. Yeah, long time. Ask yes. me if I'm tired of my wife. Are you tired of your wife? No, I'm not. Are you tired of your sister? Mm. Sometimes. <laughs> Are you tired of your brother? <laughs>
<laughs> yes? All right. Now, ask me if I still like my wife. Do you still like your wife? Yes, I do. I still like my wife, okay? And ask me if we go to the same restaurant every anniversary. Do you go to the same restaurant every anniversary? No, I don't. We don't, okay? Ask me where we are going tonight. Where are you going tonight? I don't know yet. I haven't made a decision, all right? And ask me if I like to go out. Do you like to go out? Yes, do you like to go out? Uh, or do you prefer to eat at home? Uh, no. You prefer to go out? Yes. All right, you like to go out. And uh, do, do you go out every day for dinner? No. You don't. How often do you go out for dinner? Well, I go out for dinner once a week, once a month, once a year, yeah? Three times? Three times a year, I think. Three times a year, okay. And, <laughs> and what's your favorite food besides spinach? Uh, pizza. Pizza, ask me what my favorite food is, Marina. What is your favorite food? My favorite food is corn, corn on the cob. Have you ever tried corn on the cob? No. You haven't. It's my favorite food. Ask me if people eat corn in Spain. Do people eat corn in Spain? No, not very much. But in the States, they eat a lot. Ask me what my favorite food is in Spain. What is your favorite food on Spain? On Spain or in Spain? In Spain. All right. My favorite food in Spain is paella. Is paella from Valencia or from Seville? you know? No. Ask me where paella is from. <coughs> where is? is paella from? Paella is from Valencia. Have you ever heard of fabada? Nope. You don't. Have you ever heard of, um, have you ever heard of, um, of spaghetti? Of yeah. course I have. Is spaghetti from Italy or from Greece? It's from China. Spaghetti is from China originally? Yeah. Okay. Who brought spaghetti to Europe? Marco Polo or Christopher Columbus? Marco Polo. All right. And did Marco Polo live before I was born? Of course he did. Did he live in the 12th century or in the 13th century? Do you know? In the 12th century. 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 The 13th century. I think in the 13th century. OK. And did he go to China alone or with his father and uncle? He weren't alone. Well, he didn't. He went with his father and uncle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He went with his uncle and his father. And how many years did he stay in China? Do you know? Nope. Ask me. How many years did he stay in China? Well, according to the story, he stayed in China for 20 years. Okay. Yeah. Was he from Venice or from Barcelona? He was from Venice. He was from Venice. Okay. Have you ever been to Venice? Nope. You haven't? Have I you ever? Would like to. You would like to. Have you ever been to California? Nope. Ask me if I've ever been to California. Have you ever been to California? Yes, I have. Was it cool? Yeah, it's cool. It's nice. Okay, but I prefer Venice. All right. <laughs> Ask me if I have. Well, have you ever been? Have you ever been to Barcelona? Uh, no. Nope. You haven't. Nope. Ask me. Do you go to Barcelona? No. Have you ever been? Have you ever been in Barcelona? Have I ever been to Barcelona? Yes, I have. Ask me how many times I've been to Barcelona. How many times have you been in Barcelona? I've been to Barcelona. Se dice tu aquí. I've been to Barcelona 20 or 30 times. Ask me how many times I've been to Venice. How many times have you been to Venice? To Venice. 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 Only once. Ask me how many times I've been to Italy. How many times have you been to Italy? I've been to Italy about five or six times. Uh, has, have your parents ever been to Italy? Yeah. They have? Yep. Have they ever lived in Italy? Yeah, they have. Where did they live in Italy? In Rome. All right. And uh, was that before you were born or after you were born? Uh, before and after. Ah. So were you born in Rome? Nope. Where were you born? They went to Spain. I was born and they 
went back to Italy. So they came to Spain to have you? Yeah. All right. Okay, good. And where was Marina born? She was born uh, in the same place that I was born. As I was born. In Valladolid. All right. And who is your best friend at school? Uh, boy or girl? Girl. <laughs> um, Leonor. 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 And uh, is she older or younger than you? Uh, younger. Do you know Leonor? Yeah. All right. And uh, is she, is Leonor taller or shorter than Marina? She's pretty shorter. She's a lot shorter or a little shorter? A lot. She's a lot shorter. And does um, Leonor speak English? No. A little bit. She does? Yes, a little bit. All right. Do you know hello? <laughs> hello, but does she live near you? No, she doesn't. Okay, but is she in the same class as you or in a different mm, class? Yes, in the same. She's in the same class, okay. And um, do you normally sit next to her in class? Uh, yes. Do you go to school together? Mm, yes. You do? Is I see her? No, but, but Marina, do you go to school in the morning with Leonor? No. You don't. How do you go to school? Does your mother take you? Yes. Yeah. How long does it take to go to school? Well, I don't know. Maybe 10 minutes or something. It takes about 10 minutes. Yeah. Okay. And what time is the first class? 9 o'clock. At 9 o'clock. Not at 8 o'clock. All right. What time do you get to school every day? Well... You get to school at 8.30 or just before 9 o'clock? 9, 9. Just before 9? 9, 10. Oh, you get to school late every day. A bit. A bit late. And what's your first class? Well, my first class, each day it's one. On Monday it's Spanish. All right. And then no more. And then no more. All right. How long does the Spanish class last? One hour. All right. Ask me how long this class lasts on television. How does how, how long? long does this class last on television? It lasts two hours every day. Yeah, you're only in the first hour, but it continues. Okay, for two hours. All right, and ask me how long my class lasts on the radio. How long does your class last on the radio? My class on the radio lasts three hours. Wow. Ask me if I get tired during the class. Do you get tired during the class? No, I don't. Ask me how many hours I teach every day. How many hours do you teach every day? I teach about seven or eight hours every day. Ask me how old I was when I started to teach. How old were you when you started to teach? I was 22 years old when I started teaching. Yeah. Ask me how many years I've been teaching. How many years have you been teaching? I've been teaching for 34 years. Ask if I'm starting to get tired of teaching. Are you starting to get tired of teaching? No, I'm not. Ask if my students learn quickly. Do your students learn quickly? No, they don't. Ask me why. Why? Why don't? Why don't your students learn quickly? Uh, because they don't study enough. Ask me why they don't study enough. Why don't they study enough? I don't know, Sergio. I don't know why they don't study. Maybe it's not so important for them to learn English. Is it important for you? Yes, it is. All right. Do you have English class at school now? Well, yes, but uh, it's boring. <laughs> it's boring. Okay. And uh, does the teacher speak English well? Yep. All right. Is the teacher from the United States? No. Nope. Where is the teacher from? Uh, he's from the United Kingdom. All right. And do you understand his accent well? Well, no. Does it sound strange to you? A bit. Does Marina have the same teacher? No. Who is your English teacher, Marina? Miss Yodi. Sorry? Miss Yodi. Miss Yodi. I remember Miss Yodi. And she's from the United States? Yes. All right. Now, do you know his English teacher? No. You don't. All right. How many English teachers are there in your school? Do you know? I Here, don't know. Straight. You don't know. All right. One, two. All right. And how many students are there in your school? Uh, Is it a big school? One million. 
It's a big school. It's a huge school. All right, but four is, buildings. Really? Yeah. But is it only for primary school, or is it primary and secondary? It's primary, secondary, and kindergarten. And kindergarten. And did you go to kindergarten there? Nope. You didn't. Oh, when you said you were in Florida for one year, okay? What? How long ago was that? Two years ago. Two years ago. Would you like to go back? Of course I would. Did you have a lot of fun when you were there? I was dead. Did you play a lot of sports? No. No, you didn't. Okay. And uh, was school easy or more difficult in Florida than here? It was easier than, 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 than anything. It was easier than anything? Yeah. All right. And what time did you finish school every day in Florida? I finished school at... 3 o'clock? 3.30? Do you remember? Uh, I have no idea. Okay, what time do you finish here in Valladolid? Uh, I finish... Do you know? Do you finish after lunch or before lunch? No? I don't know. All right. Ask me what time I finished school when I was your age. How, uh, what time? What time did you finish school when you were my age? I finished school at 3 o'clock. Ask me what time I started. What? How time did you start at school when you were my age? All right. I started at 9 o'clock, and I finished at 3. <clears throat> Ask me if I had lunch at school or at home. Do you have lunch at school or at home? Or at home. Or at, home? at school, every day, for 30 minutes. And do you have lunch at home or at school? At school. At school. Is the food good at school? No? <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to have to stop. It's been a pleasure. Marina, are you tired? Yes. Ask me if I'm tired. Mm, are you? Are you tired? No. I have to continue now. I have to continue. So I can't be tired. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be back in just a few minutes to continue with our program. So you have about five minutes, and, and then we will continue. So I'll see you in a few minutes, okay? Take care. Hello and welcome back. Okay, let's get to work. Manos a la obra. Let's get to work. Let's get to work. Blanca, are you an expert on Roman history? No, I'm not. No? <laughs> I wish I were. I wish I were. Ask Maria Jose if she's an expert on Roman history. Are you an expert on Roman history? Roman. On Roman history? <laughs> no, I'm not. All right, well, ask me when Rome became a republic. When did Rome become a republic? Rome became a republic around 500 B.C. Ask me what B.C. means. What mm, does yeah. B.C. mean? B.C. means before Christ. Mm -hmm. And ask me what Rome was before it became a republic. What was Rome before it became a republic? Before repu it became. Before it became a republic. Good. Repeat, please. Estamina. What was Rome before it became a republic? What was Rome before it became a republic? It was a monarchy. Okay. Ask me how long Rome was a republic. How long was Rome a republic? Rome was a republic for about 450 years. Okay. Ask me what Rome became after that. What Rome became? Uh, what did Rome become after that? After that? Okay. Uh, Rome became an empire based on a monarch, but basically a monarchy again. But not a, not a normal monarchy, about, uh, based on emperors, okay? But not a republic with uh, democratic institutions, okay? And uh, ask me <clears throat> what the best moment was of the Roman Republic. What was the best moment in the Roman of. of the Roman Republic? Probably the best moment of the Roman Republic was in the period of the Punic War. Ask Blanca if she has ever heard of the Punic Wars. Have you ever heard of the Punic Wars? No, I haven't. Uh, ask her, ask Maria Jose if she knows how to say the Punic Wars in Spanish. Do you know how to say the Punic, the Punic War in Spanish? Yes, I do. How do you say it? Guerras Punicas. Las Guerras Punicas. Now, ask me who the most important person was in the Punic Wars. 
who was the most important person in the Punic War? Wars. Wars. Uh, well, ask me how many Punic Wars there were. How many Punic Wars were there? There were three. Okay. Ask you which one was the most important. Which one was the most important? Well, probably the last one because it finished, but the middle one was very, very important, the Punic War. And um, ask me when these wars took place. When did those wars take place? Okay. Uh, they took place more or less between 250 B.C. and 150 B.C. Ask me if they took place before Julius Caesar was born. Did they took uh, did they take place before Julius Caesar was born? Yes. They took place before he was born. Okay. Ask, to ask me how many years after the last war he was born. How many years uh, was after. he after, after he... Uh, the last. Mm. Ask me how many years after the last war Caesar was born. Mm -hmm. How many years after the last war um, was. was born Julius Caesar? Was Julius Caesar. Was Julius Caesar born? Uh, he was born about 60 years or 70 years after the, the mm -hmm. last Punic War. And ask me who the war was between. Who, war, who was the war between? The war was between Rome and Carthage. Mm -hmm. Ask Blanca if she has ever heard of Carthage. Have you ever heard of Carthage? Carthage. Carthage. Cartilage is cartilage. <laughs> yes. Carthage. Cartago. But, um, yes, I have. All right. Ask me where Carthage was located. Where is Carthage located? Where is, se puede decir, but where, where was where Carthage located? Located. located? located. It was located in uh, North Africa, on the coast, uh, in what is today Tunisia. Ask me if there are still some ruins of Carthage in Tunisia. Are there still some ruins? Uh, of, of, of uh, Carthage on Tunis in. in Tunisia? Yes, there are, but not many. Mm -hmm. There are very few ruins. Ask me why there are very few ruins. Why were there... Why are there? Uh, why are there so... Few. So few ruins. 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 Como si fuera una E. Ruins. Uh, because the, the Romans destroyed Carthage completely and put salt on the ground to destroy the land, okay? Now, <clears throat> ask me if the Carthaginians were similar to the Romans. Were the Carthaginians similar to the Romans? No, they weren't. Ask me why, why they were so different. Why were they so different? The Carthaginians were descendants of the Phoenicians from what is today a Libano, Lebanon. So they were Asian people. And the Romans, of course, were from the center of Italy, Latium in that area, Latin people. So they were quite different. Ask me why they had wars. Why um, did they, did they ha have wars? They had wars because, um, uh, because there was um, competition to control the Mediterranean, the commerce and the trade in the Mediterranean. All right. Ask me if Carthage was older than Rome. Was Carthage older than Rome? Yes, it was. It was older than Rome. Okay. And uh, ask me which, which, ask me who won the war. Uh, who? who? Who won the war? Uh, Rome won the war. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, ask me who the most important general was for the Roman armies. Who was the most important general? For the Roman? For the Roman army? Armies. Armies. The most important general for the Roman armies was Scipio. Scipio. Ask me how to say his name in Spanish. How do you his name? How do in, you say? How do you say his name in Spanish? Estipion, el africano. They say. Okay. Yeah, he's Scipio. Ask me who the most important general was for the Carthaginians. Who was the most important general for the Carthaginians? Uh -huh. Carthaginians. Tienes que hablar más alto. Hannibal. Mm -hmm. Hannibal. Have you, have you ever heard of Hannibal? Sure. Okay. And uh, ask. Ask me if Hannibal spent much time in Italy. Mm. Ha did. Did Hannibal, Hannibal. Did Hannibal spend uh, much, time. much time in Italy? Yes, he did. Ask me how long he was in Italy. How long was he in Italy? He was in Italy for about 15 years. 
Jesus, okay? Ask me if he won a lot of battles in Italy. Did he win a lot of battles in Italy? Yes, he did. Ask me how many battles he won. How many battles did he win? He, went, he won three or four battles, okay? And uh, ask me why he didn't conquer Rome. Why didn't he conquer Rome? That's, uh, that is a, that is something that nobody knows why. Yeah, it, nobody knows why. But he won every battle and he decided not to enter Rome. He continued south to the south of Italy. All right. Ask me if Hannibal spent much time in Spain. Did Hannibal spend a lot of time in Spain? Yes, he did. He spent a lot of time in Spain. Ask me why. Why did he spend a lot of time in Spain? Uh, because part of Spain, the Spain of Murcia, Alicante, and Almeria, and that area, and Valencia, were under Carthaginian power. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, ask me when Julius Caesar was born. When did Julius? When was? When was Julius Caesar born? He was born in 100 B.C. Mm -hmm. Tell Blanca to ask me how old he was when he died. Ask him how old was he was when he died. How old was he when he died? He was 56 when he died. Mm -hmm. uh, ask me where he died. Where did he die? He died in Rome. Ask me if he died at home. Did he die at home? No, he didn't. Tell Blanca to ask me where he died. Ask him where, um, he, where he died. 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 Where did he die? He died in the Roman Senate. What uh, is Senate? Senate. In Madrid, the, um, in Madrid, which is the capital of Spain, there are two houses of parliament, hmm. what you call the Congreso de Diputados, the, the, dep the Congress of Deputies, and the Senate. Senado. Okay. okay. Yeah. So he died in the Roman Senate. Ask me if he died of a heart attack. Did he die of heart attack? Of a heart attack? Did he die of a heart attack? He didn't. Ask me if he died of a stroke. Did he die of... Did of he die? Did he die of... Did he die? Did he die of a stroke? Of a stroke. ¿Qué pasa con los artículos hoy? <laughs> of a stroke. Hmm? No, he didn't. Okay. Ask me if he died of an epileptic fit. Did he die of an... Die. Did he die of uh, an uh, epileptic epileptic fit? fit? Un ataque. Si te fit. Mm -hmm. uh, no, he didn't. Although Julius Caesar suffered epilepsy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not strong, but he suffered epilepsy. No, he didn't. Ask me how he died. How did he die? He was assassinated. Ask me who assassinated him. Who assassinated him? Pasalo, por favor. Uh, who ass assassinated him? Good. Uh, 23 people mm -hmm. simultaneously, okay? 23 senators. Ask me what happened to those senators. What happened to those senators? Nothing. Initially. Okay. Ask me what ultimately happened to them. Uh, what happened? To them? To them ultimately. Uh, most of them died. Well, all of them died, of mm -hmm. course. But most of them were uh, killed mm -hmm. uh, for that crime. Most of them. And uh, <clears throat> ask me who became the leader after Caesar died. Who became the leader after Julius Caesar died? Basically, two people became the leader of Rome after mm -hmm. Caesar died, the two most important. Uh, they were Octavius mm -hmm. and Mark Antony. Ask me if Octavius and Mark Antony were friends. Were Octavius and Mark Antony friend? friends? Friends. Friends. Uh, not really. They were not enemies necessarily, but they were together. Ask me how he died. How did he die? He committed suicide. Mm. Ask me why. Why did he commit suicide? Uh, because Octavius had won the battles and was taking